This week, Siskel and Ebert review Woody Allen's new comedy, Radio Days. Richard Pryor becomes a doctor overnight in critical condition. And Beth Midler and Shelley Long are hot on the trail of a two-timing man in outrageous fortune. It's all coming up next on Siskel and Ebert and the Movies. Rockaway. The time is my childhood. It's my old neighborhood, and forgive me if I tend to romanticize the past. I mean, it wasn't always as stormy and rain-swept as this, but I remember it that way because that was it at its most beautiful. Woody Allen remembers the old days in Brooklyn and Radio Days, one of four new movies we'll be reviewing this week. And I'm Roger Ebert of the Chicago Sun-Times. And I'm Gene Sisko of the Chicago Tribune. Radio Days, I think, is another triumph for Woody Allen, reaffirming his place as a national treasure in terms of both the entertainment value of his films and his personal growth as a filmmaker. As American movies have been getting more and more juvenile, Woody Allen's films have been getting more mature, and they're still as funny as ever. Radio Days is his personal tribute to growing up in a world, believe it or not, kids, before television. <laughs> when working class families like the one Alan as off-screen narrator says he grew up in got their kicks imagining the lifestyles of the rich and famous through listening to their antics on the radio. In those days, the radio was constantly playing at our house. My mother, for instance, never missed her favorite show, Breakfast with Irene and Roger. Good morning, darling. Pass the orange juice, please. There you go. That was quite an opening night we attended last night, wasn't it? Yes, wasn't it divine? Everyone was there from Rogers and Hart to Cole Porter. Yes, darling. There were two completely different worlds. While my mother stood over the dirty plates in Rockaway, Irene and Roger ate their elegant breakfast over the air from their chic Manhattan townhouse while they chatted charmingly about people and places we only dreamt of. Marvelous, darling. Tomorrow morning we'll be telling you all about it and also about the new Moss Hart play, which I hear is just divine. This is Irene Draper and Roger Daly saying, have us for breakfast tomorrow and every morning and have a wonderful day. The film flip-flops constantly between the swanky high society world of the radio stars and the more mundane but also very heated and funny world of Alan's bickering middle-class home life. Wait a minute. Are you telling me you think the Atlantic is a greater ocean than the Pacific? No, have it your way. The Pacific is greater. I mean, how many people fight over oceans? Then there was my Uncle Abe. He kept bringing home fish from his friends who worked at Sheepshead Bay. Seal, I'm home! Seal! I got fish! I got great fish today! Ugh. What do we need more fish for? And of course my Aunt Seal, who dreamed of a more exciting life than always having to fillet his flounder. They're, they're fresh fish! He has friends at Oscar's dock, so we can't spend a single afternoon there where they don't load them up with fish. If you don't like it, take the gas pipe. Next there was Grandpa and Grandma. Every single morning he spent a half hour packing her into her corset. I'm falling, I'm falling! <laughs> A woman in her 70s, and her bosom is still growing. That's vintage Woody Allen humor. Radio Days is full of Woody Allen stock players, too, including Mia Farrow as a cigarette girl who wants to be a star, but really comes much closer to death when she witnesses a mob club owner being killed. Now here, the hitman's mother talks her son out of killing Mia Farrow. I'd just do anything to get on radio. I'd, I'd be happy to give the weather report or interview people. I think I'm a natural. Oh. I'm a great dancer. But you can dance on radio. I know, because they can't see you. Oh, my God, I know. Oh, my God, I'm here. My place is so Wait, wait, come here, Rocco. Come uh, here. Well, come here. I got to tell you something. You come over here with me. Vieni, vieni, Rocco. Listen to me. You don't have to fear and worry about that girl yeah. because she's not too fast up here. She wouldn't make no trouble. She is terrific. That scene goes on and on. It's one of the funniest scenes in the movie. 
due to Woody Allen's writing, of course, but also his staff's ability to find character players like that mother, played by Gina DeAngelis. I don't know where she came from. Obviously, New York City, not necessarily <laughs> Manhattan, though, I think. Uh, she is absolutely terrific. Radio Days is full of laughs, but there's also a bittersweet side, as Alan remembers a time before television helped rob us of our imaginations. I think he's really making a statement here about the golden days of radio and the tarnished days, I'm afraid, of television. Radio Days is an extraordinarily entertaining and well-made film. As I sat there in the theater, I was so grateful for the richness of this film. There is so much there. I mean, you talked about how many of the funny... We saw some of the funny scenes in the movie. There are scenes in this movie much funnier. Yes. Even so, there... there the is one with the rabbi had me laughing for a minute, and um, then later in the movie I kept remembering it. Over and over we laugh at scenes like that, and yet there are moments in this movie, too, that are so evocative. Now, I remember from that period the story of that little girl who was caught down in the well and for exactly. three days and nights they tried to dig her out and then she was found dead you know yes. that made a big impression on me when i was about four or five years old and as i saw this movie again i remembered and i think woody allen remembers exactly how the whole nation got, got involved in that through the imagination of picturing that scene on the radio and over and over in this film he shows how the radio went into our minds and really became a part of our lives and so it's a complete movie. It's not just a comedy. Right. It's got a lot of serious stuff in it, too. Right. It's beautifully photographed. The movie it reminds me of the most is Amacord by right. Bellini. Right. That wonderful, sentimental right. ev evocation of another time. Did you think he was knocking television, the television age, too, and saying the kids are robbed a little bit, a little bit cheated by not having radio? I think so, in a way. That, uh, because in, in radio, it all takes place inside your imagination. Yeah. It's not out there on the screen. This is think how good we'd be on the radio. <laughs> Wouldn't have to look at us for one thing. Well, that would help. <laughs> next movie. <laughs> Our next movie is Critical Condition, Richard Pryor's new comedy. And the good news is that Pryor is funnier this time than he's been in several of his other recent movies. But the bad news is that, once again, the comedy turns into a heart-rending human interest story and an action picture at the end. In the movie, Pryor pays a, plays a real estate man who's sent to jail for a year and tries to fake insanity in order to beat the rap. He's sent to a psycho ward, and when he's able to pass for a doctor in all the confusion. So it seems like this one, he's got to try to decide whether to act like a doctor or not. What a cute coat. Well, thank you very much. He's got a medal. The last line in the movie is, I'm proud to be a man. I thought there... Wait a minute. He may be, uh -huh. but he shouldn't be saying this in a movie. Right. He there should be cutting be, up and with a stethoscope. Too many movies going on here. One part of the movie was like one of those airplane uh, yeah. retreads, you know, where they're making right. fun of the hospital shows. Another part was like uh, Hurricane or the Poseidon Adventure, where they're trying to drag the the uh, electrical generator in before the flood takes just the hospital. Just give us Richard it. Pryor. On, let's just make it funny. Let's not make it into a multi-million dollar action picture. You know what they ought to do? They ought to just say, Richard, stand in front of the camera, be funny for 90 minutes. They would come up with a better picture than this one. Coming up next, Bette Midler and Shelley Long co-star as rival actresses playing for real with the CIA in Outrageous Fortune. The unbelief. You're really determined to have us killed. Hey, get over yourself. He's not going to kill us. Oh, why not? Because we're going to be raped and murdered in this building. Oh. Orville Redenbacher. Yeah? Here's another microwave popcorn trying to be like yours. Well, let's just see what my testing department says. Ladies? Compared to other Nysna brands, Orville's pops lighter and fluffier. So you get more popped corn. Theirs just doesn't measure up to yours. And now for the ultimate test, ladies. <laughs> Orville Redenbacher, the first and last name in popcorn. Come with me. Come see something beautiful. Ultress, Clairol's newest. The only permanent hair color with a gel colorant. Colors are soft, luminous. Look at them. Even Europe never made shades more beautiful. Delicate blondes, not brassy. Subtle browns, black, reds. Only Ultress has extra conditioner. Hair feels soft, wonderful. Be the best you've ever been. With Gel Formula Ultress by Clairol. Blockbuster hit. Get scared out of your wit. Movies tonight on video. Hey, they got a full selection. Look for me, Rocky, in the action section. Movies tonight on video. Movies tonight on video. 
Are you looking for a new TV or stereo but don't want to spend all your money? Hey, keep your cash in your pocket and come on down to Old Rinco. We rent to own name brand color TVs, Zenith, Sharp, Quasar, and Stereos, Fisher, Pilot, JVC for low weekly or monthly rates. Best of all, there are no credit checks, no large down payment, no long-term obligation. Call today, get it today, and rent to own without a loan. Our next film is Outrageous Fortune, a film full of fits and starts. The starts, the good parts, are provided mostly by Bette Midler. The fits, the bad parts, by Shelley Long and by a lot of boring action scenes at the end of the movie. Midler and Long play rival actresses who fall in love with the same guy. The obvious gimmick is that Midler plays a brassy type and Long is more uptight, I guess, just like on our TV show. And they're still very competitive about this same guy. I believe that he loved me. That he barely knew you and your, your fantasizing uh, relationship that is probably an isolated, drunken encounter. Isolated? Isolated? Hey, this girl does not have one night stand. Every guy I have ever slept with, and we are way into double digits here, has come back for more. Every single one. Midler really is a hoot through much of this picture, especially when she tries to save seats on a plane so she can track her suddenly missing lover. But this woman, she's got to get on this plane. There's a kidney in Kansas City that's not getting any fresher. That's a great gag about the kidney. Now, the film really drags, though, when the two women are in the desert. Here they run into an old hippie played by George Carlin. You're looking for a guide, right? Native Indian to show you the hidden wonders of this great Chickatakawa nation? Well, ladies, you have found him. Special price, today only, $20. I don't want to be the first to break this to you. You are not an Indian. That's a technicality. I've been a blood brother to the Chickatakawa since 1968. I got a tan. What do you want for $20? I'm a big George Carlin fan, but it's not for routines like that. And then what happens after they're out in the desert with him and his motorcycle gang is just one long chase, one long boring chase. I wish there had been more time spent with Midler and Long in non-action scenes. In other words, I would have made this more of a city picture than what this really is, which is some kind of western, at least for about the last 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. Outrageous Fortune isn't a bad film. It just steadily lost its comic energy for me. I feel exactly the way you did, surprisingly, maybe. <laughs> uh, and it's kind of the same complaint we had about Critical Condition. Why don't they just make a comedy? Why don't they depend upon creating interesting characters, funny characters, develop them in an interesting way so that at the end of the film, the climax can be comic payoffs, but mm -hmm. subconsciously they know they don't really have the comedy there, and so they give you all of these action scenes, all of these chase scenes, and the stunts. I and know. the stunts at the end of this movie, which I won't give away, are so distracting, mm -hmm. so unnecessary, mm -hmm. so unlikely, and so obviously done by stunt doubles that mm -hmm. you just sit there thinking, gee, it must have cost a lot of money, and what a waste of time. Yeah, well, some of it looks like one of those car commercials, you know, where they put a car on top of one of the mountains in Arizona, and yeah, you wonder, yeah, gee, how did uh -huh. they get it on there? Well, I don't want to be thinking about that, you see, because I'm in love with Bed Midler in this film, at least mm -hmm. the characters mm -hmm. that she plays, you know, the way she sure. hustles yeah, across uh -huh, the stage. Uh -huh. I mean, when you got a treasure like that, let her roll, let her rip, let her be funny. Don't have somebody chasing her, have her up close in camera knocking the heck out of Shelley Long. That's funny. You're absolutely right. Coming up next, two kids from Edinburgh are restless natives who become modern day Robin Hoods. <coughs> God bless you. You can rent a video player too. There's a store near you. Art. Movies tonight on video. They're helpful and friendly with films for the, 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 the whole family. <laughs> Movies tonight on video. Movies tonight on video. Fixing septic backups, odor problems, even routine maintenance used to be expensive. But now, with Echo Clean, you can digest the smelly gook that is plugging your system. It will give you many odor-free years between pumpings, and that can save you hundreds of dollars. So get guaranteed Echo Clean at all Taylor Drug Stores and Auto Drug Stores.
The sports show is now open at the fairgrounds. Win an Orlando vacation in the Put Your Way to Florida contest from the Courier Journal and Travel Travel Galleria. Or win a beautiful Steebledon's pool table while you watch the Bush Pool League tournament. And top line fishing tackle is the prize in the Berkeley Speedcast contest. The sports show. All about you, February 1st at the fairgrounds. I'm about to offend a lot of steak lovers by covering this beautiful sirloin with ketchup. You wouldn't do that, right? Yet you'd pour ketchup on a burger. And isn't that chopped steak? Try A1 steak sauce on your burger instead of ketchup. Its herbs and spices bring out the natural flavor of steaks. It makes hamburgers taste like steak burgers. So don't cover it. Discover it with A1. And save the ketchup for your fries. Our next movie is named Restless Natives, and it's a whimsical slice-of-life comedy from Scotland. A movie about two teenagers who don't like their jobs. One works in a magic store, and the other one sweeps up in the park, and they debate sticking up tourist buses <laughs> in order to supplement their income. Here they are in action with masks for... This is a gun! This, this is, is a gun! And me! And me. This is a holdup! where Danny DeVito and Joe Piscopo play two lower echelons who try to please their boss. Look over this. Let me see how it looks in the light. Oh, sure. Hey, oh. Mr. Costello, Jackie, thanks! Wow. Jacket actually is bulletproof. Now that gag works even if you've seen it before, and I have it. I still laugh at that. And it sets the tone for the whole movie, which is quite outrageous. This whole movie is pitched at a terribly high level. Danny DeVito and Piscopo have to eventually abandon their plans to get ahead in the mob and simply just avoid having the mob get their heads. Wise Guys <laughs> is a very funny, R-rated picture. I, I loved it. I share your mystification that it didn't do better at yeah. the box office. Now, we happen to have seen this picture at the same time in a theater full of people. Is that people. right? I don't even remember. Yes, we did. I remember very clearly from last summer. Okay. And everybody was laughing from beginning to end. And as I walked out of the theater, if you had asked me if this was going to be a hit at the box office, I would have said, sure, it's that funny. Uh -huh. But it didn't make it. I'm glad it has another chance. All I remember time. is me laughing. I thought it was earlier, not in the year, or I think it was earlier in the year before summer. It was early in the year. Oh, well, this is really important. I know. We'll be back next week with the exact date of when we saw this movie. But we both thought it was funny, right? My you choice got it. this week in the video stores is the sure thing, a gift of romantic comedy that came out, I believe, was it in February or March last year, and told the story of a college student who hitchhiked to California with a girl that he thought he couldn't stand. He was going out there because he'd been promised a date with a sure thing, but the trip is so difficult, it hardly seems worth the trouble. I have a credit card. I have a credit card. Credit cards work in a completely different kind of lock. I don't think you understand. I have a credit card. You have a credit card? I have a credit card. I have a credit card. Oh. My dad told me specifically I can only use it in case of an emergency. Well, maybe one will come up. That's John Cusack as the student in search of the sure thing, and Daphne Zuniga as the classmate he thinks he doesn't like, until, of course, he falls in love with her and she with him. This was a movie that made me feel good because it concentrated on the warmth of their friendship and how it grew into love. And it's not often that a comedy cares so much about what people really care about. And these two comedies we're recommending in the video segment yeah. do right what Critical Condition and uh, the Bette Midler picture do wrong, which yeah. is they follow the people instead of the stunts. Well, the one thing is I expected, especially the way the film opened with that gorgeous woman uh, on the beach, mm -hmm. I expected this to be another teenage sex movie. Yeah. And what was so wonderful is that the director, Rob Reiner, delayed, or whoever wrote the picture, mm -hmm. Together, they delayed going out to California and having it turn into a sex comedy with the girl and right. instead made it a real love story. And that's and sweet a, and wonderful. And a real good relationship, you bet. too. Right. Okay, and now let's recap our reactions by sheer coincidence to this all-comedy show. We agree, mm -hmm. Roger. They're all comedies, right? Mm -hmm. Supposed to be, anyway. Uh, okay. Yeah. Both Roger and I love Woody Allen's Radio Days. It's one of the very best films he's ever done, and that's saying a lot. Two big thumbs up. 
I wish he made a movie every week. We were both disappointed with Richard Pryor's latest comedy, Critical Condition, where he once again fails to play someone as funny as we know Richard Pryor to be, two thumbs down. And we were also in agreement on Outrageous Fortune. Even Bette Midler, who's so wonderful, couldn't save this comedy from its own boring chase scenes, two thumbs down. Finally, we split on the whimsical Scottish comedy, Restless Natives, about a couple of boys robbing tourists. I thought it was light and breezy and sweet and wonderful. Roger felt it became predictable too soon. One thumb up, one down. The obvious one we're recommending, Radio Days. Radio Days by Radio Woody Days. Allen. He goes from one strength to another. And I, my prediction is Radio Days will help to remind people of how much they liked Hannah oh, and her I sisters. Think you're right. And will certainly help it. Uh, at Academy Award nomination time. And I want it all goes together. And I want to see if there's a better picture in 1987 than Radio Days. I'll be, be surprised. It'll be a good year if there is. You That's go. it for this week. Next week, a couple of biggies. Deborah Winger and Teresa Russell in a thriller named Black Widow and Michael J. Fox and Joan Jett in a family rock and roll drama named Light of Day. That's next week. And until then, the balcony is closed. Nestle Crunch. It's creamy milk chocolate and crispy crunchies. Chocolate is scrunchious when it crunches. That's why you'll love Nestle Crunch. Curel Moisturizing Lotion. Most women agree, Curel ends dry skin. There's one pancake syrup that pours gold, made with real maple and thick naturally. It's no riddle, it's new golden griddle. Toast them, the wholesome fruit-filled snack that tastes great. The pastry with the flaky crust. Toast them, mmm-mmm, they are delicious.